Hello, it's David from David Savory Electrical Services Limited, and I have for you today a little video on the effect of uh, insulation resistance on an RCD, or at least the effect it has on an RCD when there's not enough of the stuff. A little warning though, this uh, video contains my most unfavourite of things, mathematics. Nigel and I were called out last week to a nuisance RCD trip on this 16th edition split load board. The trip event itself was intermittent. It might go two or three times a day, but with no obvious pattern. And indeed, while we were on site, it didn't present itself, so we weren't able to catch it in the act. Such faults are always the trickiest to track down. I see on the Artisan Electrics channel, he had a similar problem recently and converted the dual RCD board into an RCBO configuration in order to segregate the circuits to prevent an earth leakage fault on any single circuit from affecting the others. But this also has the advantage of preventing the cumulative effect of poor insulation resistance from causing a trip, and it's that cumulative effect that I shall be looking at today. First of all though, a quick tip. When a client tells you that they think they know what is causing an RCD trip, always take it with a pinch of salt. Last Christmas Eve I was just about to pour a pint of eggnog and get busy jingling my bells when the bloody mobile phone started ringing, which leads me to a second tip. If you've down tools for a holiday, turn the friggin' phone off. Anyway, it was a good customer of mine, so I was compelled to answer the call, uh, and needless to say, it was an RCD trip uh, when the ensuite lights are operated. So I load up the van, trundle to site, and some, spend some time checking over at the top floor socket circuit because the ensuite lighting is spurred off it. I couldn't find anything wrong and I couldn't reproduce the fault. So I figured it was a red herring and I did what I should have done in the first place which was to open up the CU and start testing the other circuits on that RCD and sure enough it was nothing to do with the ensuite lighting. It was a circuit providing a dedicated supply for the central heating that was uh, found to be a fault. Uh, in the end it turned out to be a water leak getting onto the PCB inside the heating system. But the point is that on an installation where several circuits hang off one RCD, the trip event may occur when one of the healthy circuits is in operation, leading to suspicion that the client, in the client's mind that the cause has been identified when it is in fact a red herring, which is what we experienced on this job, as the client pointed us in the direction of his septic tank. Uh, this being a big place out in the middle of nowhere. Apparently things were stable with that circuit switched off, but not wanting to get too cosy around the business end of somebody else's macerated faeces, we figured we'd check out all the circuits at source first to see if we could identify any smoking guns. So let's have a closer look at this board, and you can see here we have seven circuits on the red non-RCD side of the board. We'll ignore the doorbell transformer in the centre of this thing. With the green RCD side all switched off, we clamp the tails using the TIS MFT Pro and it's expensive clamp accessory that I will be talking more about in a future video. Uh, anyway, uh, we use that to measure uh, 4 milliamps of earth leakage current. So that's 4 milliamps which has nothing at all to do with our tripping issue because it's not coming from the RCD side of the board. With the RCD side of the board then all switched back on, we saw the earth leakage jump up to 17 milliamps. Uh, so if we take off the 4 milliamps measured earlier, then that leaves 13 milliamps of leakage current currently coming from the RCD protected circuits. Next we power down all but one of these circuits, verified it wasn't adding anything to the earth leakage current, and we ramp tested the RCD where we observed it tripping at 22.5 milliamps. This is a 30 milliamp RCD, so uh, it's going to trip somewhere between 20 and 30 milliamps. I'd prefer it to be tripping a little closer to the upper limit, but I wouldn't say that this RCD is too sensitive. So, although we haven't experienced the fault ourselves while at site, we know that it'll only take an additional leakage, leakage current of about 9.5 milliamps in order to uh, trip this RCD for it to reach its threshold and to click off the power to all these circuits. Okay, well the homeowner has indicated that the problem is with this outbuilding circuit, circuit number 12, and he specifically mentioned the septic tank hanging off it as he's had electrical problems with that before. Certainly, with this circuit switched off, he reports things are stable, but this circuit is adding little to the earth leakage current when powered on. In fact, we're seeing a bigger jump in the numbers when the kitchen socket circuit is powered up. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is to power down, then disconnect and test each circuit in turn. We're insulation resistance testing at 500 volts between earth and our line neutral which have been connected together. The neutrals are disconnected from the neutral bar uh, during testing because we want to ensure that we're getting the results only from our circuit under test and that our results are not being affected by neighbouring circuits. We're using the, uh, the Metrol MI3100S here uh, simply because it sits nicely on top of the stepladder. Uh, but let's have a look at the results. 
When it comes to testing the resistance of the insulation surrounding our conductive parts, we want that figure to be as high as possible of course. My Metrol has a full scale deflection of 999 mega ohm, but only the PV circuit here achieves that. For this type of circuit tested at this voltage, regulation 643.3.2 permits a minimum value of 1 mega ohm. However, like many others, I go by 2 mega ohm as a minimum. If it's below 2, it needs looking at. Circuits 16 and 17 uh, are plenty high enough, but 14 and 15 appear to be a problem. At this stage though, we haven't disconnected any appliances, so it's more likely to be a duff appliance than a problem with the fixed wiring, but you never know. As it turns out, the reason circuit 15 was reading so low is because it had one of these surge protected extension strips plugged in. So when we zap 500 volts down line and neutral, the varista in there kicks in and provides a low resistance path to squash what it sees as a surge. That 0.34 number is therefore a red herring and that circuit actually tests out to 42.1 mega ohm with that surge protected strip removed. Before we go uh, around and plugging any other things, let's see what uh, these existing numbers give us when we do the maths. What we have here are a bunch of resistances connected in parallel with regard to the RCD. You may recall from your school physics lessons that the resultant resistance when connected in parallel will always be lower than the single lowest individual resistance. In this case, the 1.58 mega ohm measured on circuit 14. Here's our calculation. Notice I've discounted circuit 18 entirely as the result of that is effectively zero. Uh, circuit 16 and 17 are also pretty close to zero as it turns out, but we'll leave them in place here. Adding this lot up gives us a figure of 0.823. To get the overall insulation resistance, we need to take the reciprocal of this number. And if we do that, we get a figure of around 1.22 mega ohm, which is, as expected, lower than the lowest individual circuit IR, which we're seeing here on circuit 14. So as far as the RCD is concerned, the resultant insulation resistance it is being exposed to uh, is at this time close to the minimum permitted by regulation 643.3.2. And remember, this is on a good day where the fault isn't currently present, so uh, it wouldn't take much of a decline on any of these circuits to pull the resultant IR down even further. And a, and a reduction in the resistance uh, allows a rise in earth leakage current and we already know we only need, need another 9.5 milliamps before we hit the threshold of this particular RCD. So why is it stable with circuit 12, the outbuilding, switched off if that has a relatively high IR? Well, turning off this MCB disconnects the line to the outbuilding. The neutral remains connected, but when testing the insulation resistance of that neutral with respect to earth at 250 volts, we get a figure of 212 mega ohms. So uh, it's the line wiring or something connected to it that pulls this circuit down to 27.5. And with it flicked off, we go up to 212. The reciprocal of 212 is 0.004, which is so low as to affect effectively remove this circuit from the calculation, meaning our resultant number drops to 0.787, whose reciprocal is 1.27 mega ohms. Big wow, huh? not a lot of difference on the face of it. Uh, but nonetheless, it is an increase of some 50,000 or so ohms, and that may just be enough to keep the earth leakage below the tripping threshold of the RCD. In fact, turning off any of the first four circuits could have had an effect on raising the overall IR, at least so long as uh, any issues are on the line rather than the neutral sides, as turning off the MCB doesn't isolate the circuit neutral, of course. This is why you can't always go by what the customer says, as what they're doing may be having a positive effect on reducing the reoccurrence of the fault, but it's incidental, the cause still lies elsewhere. Let's go back to where we were. Uh, and take a closer look at this problem on the kitchen socket circuit, which is dragging everything else down. We're, we're going to go around and unplug everything on that circuit. Simply turning off the socket outlets of any connected appliances may be no good, because if it's a single pole switch, the neutral of the appliance will remain connected, and we want to fully isolate all loads. So we'll withdraw all plugs from all socket outlets and switch off any double pole fused connection units. And doing this bumps our number for circuit four up to 114.9 mega ohms. Now that's quite a difference and it means one or more of the items we just unplugged has an IR fault. Looking at the numbers now we know our resultant IR will still be less than 8.18 on circuit 2 as that's our next lowest value but let's change our calculation and see what we have. So 114.9 goes uh, in place of the 1.58 from before. The reciprocal of that is a nice low 0 0.008. Add them up and we get 0 0.199. If we take the reciprocal of that, we get 
5.03 mega ohms. Less than the 8.18 mega ohm figure of circuit 2 as we expected and still not a fantastic value but much higher than the pass limit of 1 or the comfort limit of 2 mega ohms. We shouldn't see any nuisance tripping with this kind of value. But what's the culprit? Well, we plug the appliances back in and perform our lie neutral to earth IR test again after each has been reconnected. Lo and behold, it turns out to be the dishwasher. We can verify that directly with a pat tester, or if that's not on the van, we can perform an IR test at the plug top by connecting the line and neutral and IR testing with reference to the earth prong. I don't perform appliance repairs, but this could be down to a damaged cable, crushing at the cord grip, fluff, dust, or debris having gotten live parts within a water leak onto the electrics, a breakdown of insulating parts because of overheating, vibration, etc. The point is, their nuisance trip should be kept at bay so long as the dishwasher is unplugged pending service or replacement. Of course, this is all assuming that there isn't something we're missing, as the trip hasn't happened while we've been there on site. So there could yet be something else which, when plugged in or turned on by, say, a timer or a sensor, or which gets wet when it rains, may well cause trouble on one of these circuits to drop the IR again and raise the earth leakage current. One thing's for sure though, there's less chance of a trip with the dishwasher out of the loop as that's really pulling things down. I'll also say that although we've been looking at the resultant insulation resistance on the circuits here today, this also applies to the appliances on those circuits. For example, circuit 15 measures in at 42.1 mega ohm, but unplug the dryer and it rises to 70 mega ohm. Unplug the washing machine and it rises to 106.9 mega ohm. These two appliances each have their own insulation resistance that isn't optimal, and connecting both together on the same circuit drags that circuit down to 42.1, which is less than the lowest individual value of each of these. These appliances. This means you can have some appliances which individually only just pass a PAT test on IR, but if combined together, because they're both plugged into the same circuit protected by an RCBO, or if they're each on circuits connected to a common RCD, then their resultant IR can be low enough to cause problems. In our case, with the dishwasher out of the loop, the cooker would be the next thing to look at. Its value of 8.18 mega ohm is high enough for the circuit to pass muster with it connected, but the resultant IR will always be below 8 for the RCD. If clicked off at the double pole isolator, this circuit checks out at over 999 mega ohm, which effectively removes it from our calculation. Our resultant IR should now be less than 27.5, which is the next lowest value, uh, next lowest individual circuit insulation resistance that we've got here. So let's add up these numbers and we get 0 0.077, uh, the reciprocal of which is 12.98 mega ohms. So servicing or replacing the dishwasher and cooker appliances should resolve the immediate problems. Certainly their disconnection when not in use ought to stabilize the situation. Personally, I'd like to see all these circuits reporting readings of over 999 mega ohms, but in real life the numbers will vary. And nobody's going to pay for me to piss about trying to bump up numbers that are already well within pass limits, not unless further issues occur of course. This kind of fault isn't so bad when it's on uh, a socket or cooker circuit where appliances can be removed or isolated, but if on circuits with fixed appliances like lighting, then it becomes tougher to track down. But this is the issue with this kind of configuration where an RCD is protecting a group of circuits. Uh, one bad IR problem on one circuit, or a number of smaller IR problems across two or more circuits can trip the device, causing an interruption of power uh, to everything, good and bad. Splitting the board off into an RCBO configuration will get rid of this uh, resultant resistance and single point of failure. But it'll cost more to put in, and spending money on your consumer unit is like buying new tyres for your car. You know you need them, you know their job is to keep you safely trucking through your day, but there are just more enjoyable things out there to be spunking your coins onto. Incidentally, I apologise if I've used that tyre analogy before, I do lose track of what I've spouted off about on this channel. Like any electrical installation, I can also be negatively affected by those external influences listed in Appendix 5 of the Blue Book. Thanks for your time today, I uh, hope that was useful to somebody out there. Catch you next time. Oh, God damn it. Built it all down myself.